Uh, attention bowlers, we are going to get started from Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. My name is Steve Kelly and I will be your host and guide during this Class D North match between today's challengers, Wynn Trafton, with a record of 127 and 69, and Brian Hebert with a record of 90 and 106. And we are going to get started immediately with Wynn Trafton dropping five to start off. Here on this Friday afternoon at Lakeside Lanes, Manchester, New Hampshire, pleasant drive to get here. And it is good as always to have you along with us, originally live streamed on this Friday, March 29th, 2024, and that is a 10 box by Wynn Trafton to start the game. Here at Lakeside Lanes, after he missed that five drop spare leave opportunity. So, yes, originally live streamed on Friday, March 29th, 2024, and available for rewatching anytime upon the conclusion of this match. If you're new to the ACST or Candlepin Bowling in general, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you and hope you enjoy this match as well as Candlepin Bowling as a whole. As Wind Trapped and drops seven. For the first ball of the second frame, leaving the one, the two, and the four pins on the deck on lane 24 at Lakeside Lanes. If you are a returning viewer, I'd like to welcome you back, and your continued viewership is greatly appreciated, as always. Wind trapped and working on the spare on lane 24. Spare leave, three pins left on the deck. This is the pocket, takes out only the two, leaving the one and the four pins on the deck for an 8, 9, or 10 box opportunity for Mr. Wynn Trapton. Wynn Trapton has certainly been on quite a streak this season. It's another 10 box for Wynn Trapton, his second in a row. Wynn Trapton, as I said before, with a season record of 127 and 69. He's our away bowler today. His away record is 49 and 35. That's a 1.4 win-loss ratio. Compare that to his home record, which is far and away higher of 78 and 34, which is a 2.29 win-loss ratio. Wynn Trapton once again dropping seven. Better luck with the head pin, but worse luck with the leave. Overall left with the three, the four, and the six pins on the deck. Let's get a closer look at that, shall we? This is a spare leave for Win Trapped, and now on lane 24, Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire, he fires, takes the three pin, and the six pin stays mostly. It's wiggling around. Left of the goalposts with a piece of wood road blocking the right side of it. Win Trapped, and for the 10 box now, will he get his third 10 box in a row? Looks like he won't. That's a nine box. That's 29 after three for Win Trapped. And Two more to go. This is a five-game series match today. Our bowlers will bowl five, string, five strings of Candlepin Bowling in which points will be awarded to the victor of each string as well as additional points awarded to the bowler with the most grand total pinfall out of 14 available points. When trapped in dropping two, missing the head pin to the left. An odd miss for Mr. Wynn Trafton. Let's see what he can do to convert this to a possible spare. He hits the pocket in the correct, correct portion, but he misses. I'm just going to adjust the camera here so you can see Wynn just a little bit more clearly in this view. Wynn Trafton for the 10 box. He's going to settle for a 7 box. That is 36 after 4 for Mr. Wynn Trafton. He's got one more to go before he sits, and we introduce Brian Hebert to the approaches today. When trapped in with a season average of 100.8, that is the seventh highest in the D-class conference overall. He has overall been conquering D-North Division I. He is a division leader ahead of Sarah Wright, Sherelle Neeland, and Todd Holbrook. Overall, he is third in the D-Class in the overall rankings. Wynn Trafton still hunting for a spare and can't quite find one just yet. Looks like he's probably going to settle for a five box or higher to sit. His high single was 143 versus Chris Curley in week six. 
And that's going to be a 7 by Wynn Trafton, concluding his first half of the first game with 43 after 5. 43 after 5 for Wynn Trafton. And now we welcome Brian Hebert, our home bowler, to the approaches of Lakeside Lanes. Brian Hebert, no stranger to Lakeside Lanes, with a, with a record overall of 90 and 106, with 14 matches played so far. At home at Lakeside Lanes, he is 42 and 56 with a .75 win-loss ratio. That is lower than his away record, which is 48 and 50, which is a .96 win-loss ratio. Brian Hebert now working on a spare leave, a difficult one. He hits the right part of the pocket. It was a spread eagle plus the eight pin. He takes out the left side, but leaves the six and the 10 pins on the deck. Brian Hebert for the 10 box, and he will match Win Trafton's first box with a 10. Both at 10 after one. Brian Hebert with a season average of 96.1. That is 24th in the D-Class overall. Brian Hebert fires. He's off the head pin to the left. Brian Hebert is third in D North Division 4. That's ahead of Kevin Martell and behind Bill Olson and Jonathan Hogan. In the one. Oh, and the second spare ball is off to the right, taking one more out. In the wild card, Brian Hebert is in 11th place in D North overall. He needs to pass Ray McAllister, Sherelle Neeland, and Chris Sammons in order to get into the bracket to be invited to the wild card playoff rounds. Brian Hebert with a four box, an unfortunate four box for 14 after four. Couldn't quite pin out that one, unfortunately. I'd like to thank Brian Hebert for calling my match on Wednesday at Riverwalk Lanes. Here I am returning the favor, same setup. If you watch that match, you should be very familiar with this camera and score setup. Brian Hebert on lane 24 at Lakeside Lanes. He fires his first ball on the pocket this time, correcting his aiming issues there. He drops seven, the four, the seven, and the eight pins are on the deck on lane 24. Brian Hebert's high single this season is 128 versus Paul Kravitz in round 11. Hebert missing the spare leave there. He's left with the four and the seven pins. Brian Hebert's high series was 529 versus Bill Olson in round three. Brian Hebert now for a 10 box, the four and the seven pins. He misses them both. He'll take an eight box for 22 after three. Compare that to Win Trafton's 29 after three. Brian drops six, leaving the diamond left side. Still struggling to get things going in terms of marks here. Let's take a look what he's got. He's at the four, five, two, and eight pins on the deck for a spare. If he hits it right, he had a piece of wood to help him with the diamond wins again. This t the two pin is the surviving pin on the deck there. So he's going to be left with that to contend with. With a piece of wood slowly rolling out of view. For the 10 box, it's going to be a 9 box for Brian Hebert. Brian Hebert releases on lane 24, and he certainly takes some pins out. with a couple on the deck. He's thinking long and hard about it. And four down, six up. He fires, lane 24. And that's a spare for Brian Hebert. That's the first spare of the match. He will take that spare in stride.
for 41 plus a ball after 5 that it'll sit on. Now, Wynn Trafton is going to be taking the approaches of lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. He fires, and fires he does. He's off the head pin to the right, taking out six, leaving four. The one, the two, the eight, and the nine pins are on the deck now. Wynn Trafton releases. This is a spare bid, and he drops everything but the two pins. That's a nine or a ten box now opp opportunity for Wynn Trafton. When trapped in with a high series of 543, he bowled that against Sarah Wright in week two. When trapped in will take a nine box, still markless on the first for 52 after six. When trapped in has 21 strikes, 104 spares, and 146 10 boxes. With a perfect box percentage of 42. When trapped in seasonal total pins total 7,055. When trapped and dropping six, dropping seven, leaving the front three pins, the one, the two, and the three on the deck now. Let's see how Wind Trafton can tackle this. Coming right up here at the Atlantic Kennel and Singles Tour, and that's a spare for Wind Trafton. That is his first of the match. A nice delicate hit on the one, two, and three pins. Asked them nicely to fall, and fall they did. Appreciate you watching on this Friday afternoon at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. For those with any audio or visual impairments, I would like to highlight two things. First, this broadcast will be available with subtitles and live captioning. When Trapton drops eight, filling that spare with eight, leaving him with 70 after seven to complete the seventh box. And needless to say, I am also providing audible descriptions of the play-by-play -play action as well as scoring to the best of my ability. If you have any questions or suggestions on any of that, please let me know in the comments. Wind Trapton missed the spare, left leaving the five and the seven pins on the deck, so now he's going for an eight, nine, or ten box, same shot. And he's going to leave those two pins for an eight box, 78 after eight for Mr. Wind Trafton. I'll show you the scores, just because didn't have a chance to before. 78 after 8 for Win Trafton with 2 to go. Win Trafton has a season average of 100.8, so he's not too far off the mark. He's on the pocket, and he has the same shot once again. Another opportunity to take the 5 and the 7 pins. Some folks call that the setback shot. There's a left side and a left side variant. It's either the 5-7 or the 5-10. When Trafton is examining a piece of wood and per official ICBA rules, you need to, to wait till the wood fully settles or reasonably settles before you can fire your next shot. And in case you didn't know, now you know. Candlepin Facts. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Candlepin Facts. When Trafton for a spare, and there's the spare he was looking for. A redemption spare for Wynn Trafton after missing it the first time. Hey, when you get a second shot at it, sometimes you just need to go for it. So he's sitting at 88 plus a ball after 9. That's really going to help him for his target average of 100.8, 7th in the D class. You are watching Wynn Trafton bowl on lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is the Atlantic Hamilton Singles Tour, the ACST, and heartbreaker of a fill, unfortunately. That's the right side half Worcester. He takes out the 3. And the nine pins. The right side, half Worcester. Wind trapped in, looking to complete the Worcester. Does that and then some, leaving the five and the six pins on the deck with no wood. So he's looking at eight, nine, or ten. So he's looking at a 98, 99, or 100. Unlikely 100, but let's see if he can get 98 or 99. It's going to be 99 for Wind Trafton. One under his average, but still not a bad start. That's 99 after 10 for Wind Trafton. That is the benchmark for Brian Hebert to reach for the first game. But now we are going to be welcoming Mr. Brian Hebert back to the approaches, and he is filling a spare, mind you. 41 plus a ball. Ryan Hebert fires. That fill of the spare is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be three. It's more than when Trafton's half Worcester filled, but not much better. 
Let's take a closer look at Brian Hebert's spare shot. Taking a few more out. Pins might still be falling. Not quite. The four pins wobbling, but won't fall down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten box opportunity for Brian Hebert, and he drills through just the head pin for a seven box. That's 51 after six for Mr. Brian Hebert. Brian Hebert has 20 strikes, 116 spares, and 94 tens for the season. He has a perfect box percentage of 33% with 6,730 seasonal total pins. Brian dropping six on the first ball of the seventh box. He sits at 51 after six. He releases. This is a spare ball, and it sails off to the right into the void. The void staring back. The one, the two, the five, the eight, and the nine pins. For a five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten box for Brian Hebert, and he will take a nine box, leaving the head pin. He hit the two pin, which took everything out behind it, and he left just the one pin, the head pin, on the deck. That puts him at 60 after seven. Compare that to Win Trafton's 70 after seven, when in which he had a spare and an eight fill at the same location. You are watching Brian Hebert bowl on lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire this nice sunny Friday afternoon. Very pleasant compared to yesterday's rainy mess in the region. Brian Hebert on the pocket, he drops eight. The six and the nine pins are left on the deck with a piece of wood in front of them. That piece of wood is probably going to be problematic. In my opinion, he wants to play it on the right side, avoiding the wood if he can. Just like that, but he just missed the six pin just a little bit. It was the right idea. I wouldn't have thrown it any differently, but he just was off by maybe a millimeter or two. And right there, that was the shot. So, missed the second, get the third. That's a 10 box for Brian Heber. That's 70 after eight. Compare that to Win Trafton's 78 after eight at the same point in the game. We are having a fantastic time in Manchester, New Hampshire at Lakeside Lanes watching Brian Hebert bowl against Win Trafton. Win Trafton, the away bowler, and Brian Hebert, the defending home bowler. At the Atlantic Candleton Singles Tour or the ACST, this is a season-long series of one-on-one -on -one candlepin bowling matches between challengers organized into classes and divisions competing for playoff contention. Brian Hebert with five, with a five leave, and he sails the ball through the left half Worcester hole, leaving the one, the three, the six. No, excuse me. Leaving, fi leaving five pins on the deck. Third ball takes out a few more, leaving an eight box. My apologies, my pin counting game is quite not up to snuff right now. So that time he leaves the one and the seven pins for an eight box for 78 after eight. With one to go, he's going to need a mark if he wants to take two points in the first round. In the first string, that is. Each matchup against two bowlers is a scratch match, which means there are no handicaps or other assistive point value modifiers other than what we see here in the live matches. There is a maximum of 14 available points per match. Two points are awarded to the winner of each game. And Brian for a strike bid. He drops all but the 10 pin. The 10 pin is wiggling and some pin, some Deadwood even tried to help it, but it's going to refuse to go down. It stays up. Brian has a single pin spare here. The pros call this a single. He could play the wood, he could play it straight. Let's see what Brian does. It looks like he's gonna play the wood and he gets very lucky on that spare. I was a little bit worried watching the ball careen upwards when he when it ricocheted off that dead wood, but that is a spare for Brian Hebert for 88 plus a ball in the 10th. But unfortunately, even a full 10 fill is not going to be enough to conquer Win Trafton's 99 in the first. Brian will tr certainly try though. He will fill it with eight, putting him at 96, falling to Win Trafton in the first by three pins for 90 for 96 versus 99. Confirmed the scores are accurate and correct. Both bowlers with two marks apiece. Brian Hebert, the only one with a mark in the first half. All the other marks for all for both Brian and Win have been in the second half. But Win Trafton just squeaks out three more pins to take full two pin owner two point ownership of the first game with a 99 over Brian Hebert's 96. So we are going to be moving on 
to the next game. We'll take a look at Brian Hebert's stats while we are just waiting for our bowlers to reset. Brian Hebert is currently 11th. He is trailing Wintrafton by a fair amount. Um, he's 11th in the Class D division overall. He has a season record of 90, 90 and 106 with a season average of 96.1. And we'll compare that to Wintrafton, who is in third place with a season record of 127 and 69. So both bowlers have something to prove, definitely, here. When Trafton trying to maintain his playoff positioning, and Brian Hebert is just out on the outer edges. Some might call that in the hunt for playoff contention. We are in the latter half of the Atlantic Cowpin singles tour season of an 18-match season. And this is round 15 for both bowlers. Win Trafton chopping out wood like a woodcutter. He's left with the one, the four, the seven, and the nine pins at Manchester Lakeside Lanes, lane 24, and he's going to open the second the second game with an eight box. Win Trafton. Win Trafton, I still remember this. He threw a heck of a series against Sarah Wright in week two. When the two of them doubled up with Dominic Palladino and myself, Win Trafton threw a 115, 113, 120, 116, and 89, totaling 543, which was his best in the season so far, still to date. So I was happy to bear witness to that. Win Trafton dropping six, the four horsemen right side is going to be the spare leave challenge for Win Trafton. One, three, six, and ten pins. He misses the one, three pocket, hits the three, six pocket instead, leaving just the head pin on the deck. Win Trafton has the fourth high single in D-Class at 143, and he also has the fourth most ten boxes in D-Class at 146, not counting this match. That is a ten box for Win Trafton. 18 after two. For our visiting away bowler, Win Trafton is from Lita Lane, same home house as myself. Win Trafton has the third best perfect box percentage in the D class at 42%. In the past five matches, Win Trafton earned 49 points. That's plus nine from the previous set of five matches, so it's only uphill for Win Trafton so far. Win Trafton off the head pin to the left. He drops four, leaving six up. Four horse on right side, plus the five and the nine pins. The one through pocket will take this out. Or maybe some pinball action off the left side of the head pin. He takes out everything but the ten pin. Ten pins staring him down on lane 24 Lakeside Lanes on this Friday afternoon, March 29th. And he will settle for a nine box. Nine box for Win Trafton. That's 27 after three. Still fishing for marks at this time. We'll see if he gets any. But at the moment, Wintrafton is still fishing for a striker a spare in this game. He had two of them in the last game, a two mark 99. He drops seven, seven, eight, and 10 pins, a wiggly seven with plenty of wood to help him though. Look at that wood, that wood looks good for the most part. Some of it can be deceiving. If you asked for my expert opinion, I'd say hit the the frontmost piece of wood that's missing the line there. And he tries that, certainly, but you had to hit it on the left side just enough where it would kind of careen left and right to take out the seven pin in addition to the other two pins on the right side of the deck. Wintrafton's looking at a nine or a ten box now, and he's going to take a ten box. Cleans it up. 37 after four for Wintrafton with one to go. Wintrafton has... Six matches over, totaling over 500 this season. Per home match, he averages 90, uh, excuse me, per home match, he averages about 9.75 points and averaging 8.17 points per away match. Opening ball of the fifth frame, he drops four, leaving six. The four horsemen left side plus the six and the nine pins, an awkward italicized array of pins, in neat rows. He hits a piece of wood careening around, taking out two more pins, leaving the one, the two, the seven, and the nine pins on the deck. When trapped and looking at a six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 box opportunity now to sit on something good, but it's gonna be a seven box. He's gonna sit on 44 after five. 44 after five. He is 45 away from another 99. He averages 100, so just ever so slightly under average, but still doing overall pretty well. 
going to say hello to Brian Hebert once again, our home bowler. He bowls here out of Lakeside Lanes, his home lanes. He starts out in lane 24 to open up the second game, and he releases off to the right of the head pin. He's dropped six so far. The one, the seven, the eight, and the nine pins are on the deck. Not a lot of wood to help him either. Let's see what Brian can do here. He caresses the piece of wood and misses all the other pins. He's still left with the same amount of pins as from the first ball. The one, the seven, the eight, and the nine pins. For a six, seven, eight, nine, or ten box, it's going to be a seven box for Mr. Brian Hebert Jr. Brian Hebert Jr. is the son of Brian Hebert Sr. and Marta Hebert. Both very active bowlers in the 80s and the 90s, maybe the 70s, both of which still bowl today. We bowl in a Sunday night league all together. Them, Brian Jr., and myself, we bowl Sunday nights at Lakeside in the mixed league specifically. Brian Hebert dropping seven, by the way, the four, the seven, and the nine pins. Prior to that, I call them the Bryans, <laughs> the Heberts, and myself bowled in the Wednesday night leagues at Lita Lanes prior to mid-2020 when the pandemic kind of did things. And that's going to be an eight box. Nope, not an eight box. Excuse me. That was one ball ahead. The four and the seven pins for Brian Heber for an eight, nine, or ten box. It will be a ten box, a nice slow and methodical ten box for Brian Hebert, putting him at 17 after two. Brian Hebert is a secondary manufacturing league at lead at Microspec Corporation, which provides medical tubing and focuses on extrusion technology. Brian on the one-two pocket, dropping seven, the four, the five, excuse me, the three, the five, and the six pins on the deck with no wood, or no helpful wood, that is. Brian manages a team of folks who produce these extrusion technology parts at Microspec. So the next time you're hooked up to something medical, check to see if it consists of microspec parts. Previously, Brian worked at Supreme as a technical coordinator. Brian Hebert will take a nine. Nope, slow moving 10 box once again. That seems to be the theme of the day here at Lakeside Lanes. That's 27 after three for Brian Hebert. Seven, 10, 10. The 10 boxes are definitely not scarce today. Marks just a little bit. There were two marks apiece in the previous game, though, in case you missed it. Brian is great at rigging up audio equipment, such as all kinds of mics, wireless labs, all, all, the, all the like. He also assisted me in setting up the equipment today. Just helps me with the camera focus and stuff. He's just slightly faster at it than I am. He's great at providing recommendations for microphones and everything. He studied communications at Keene State College. And Brian is looking at an ugly 10 box opportunity. The one, the two, the seven, and the nine pins on the deck. Hitting the one, two pocket the right way may guarantee you three of these four pins, but it's tough to spread out the right way to take out the seven and the nine pins. Welcome to Kennelpin Bowling. Brian fires. And he misses wide right. I don't know where that ball was going, but that's a six box for Brian Hebert. That's 33 after four. Hope this broadcast finds you well. Everybody involved here, from the bowlers to the staff you cannot see all around, appreciate your viewership and interest in this live stream, as well as Kennelpin Bowling as a whole. Tim Lipke's son, Shane Lipke, is here in the audience watching. We are at Lakeside Lanes, located right off of Exit 1 on 101 in Manchester, New Hampshire. I like to think of it as if you're going to UNH from 293, but decide to go bowling instead and veer off to the first exit you see on 101. Brian Hebert's struggling just to get every pin to fall down. He's left with a five pin for a nine box, a markless 42 after five. Comparable to Win Trafton's markless 44 after five. Pins just aren't really falling for our bowlers this afternoon. The bowlers having a sleepy Friday afternoon here at Lakeside Lanes for sure. So Win Trafton is going to return to the approaches here. Both bowlers on mostly even footing at the moment. Wind trapped and fires on lane 23. Fires a little bit too hard, a little bit too full on the left side. Takes out the two and the eight pins for the left side half Worcester. There are two kinds of half Worcesters, the two and the eight and the three and the nine. 
you get both on ball one and ball two, you can call that a full Worcester. And when trapped and you already got those pins, buddy. Sails through the void where the two and the nine pins once, the, excuse me, the two and the eight pins once stood. Looking at a ten box, hopefully not a two box. It's going to be certainly more than a two. It's going to be a seven box for Win Trafton. Bailing himself out of a disastrous sixth frame, potentially, but he's at 51 after six. Lakeside Lanes is located on the first right off of the Massabesic traffic circle. After taking exit one on 101 and adjacent to Massabesic Lake, Lakeside Lanes is a humble 24-lane house comprised of all wood lanes and approaches. When Trafton with a 7 drop, the 5, 6, and 10 pins with favorable wood on the 5 pin facing the 6 and the 10. Let's see if he can get the spare. Win Trafton. And he hits the object pin, the object wood, and oddly he just sails straight through full, leaving the 6 and the 10 pins on the deck. For the 10 box, when Trafton versus the 6 and the 10 pins, he will get that 10 box. Still markless, but at 61 after 7. Lakeside Lanes opened on November 27th, 1959, and is nearly the same age as Lita Lanes at roughly 64 years, as of January 2024. According to Lakeside Lanes' website, rigid specifications of construction require that they had to be level to width of 40 out of a thousandth of an inch, so precise to say that the setting of wood alone required more than a month's time. Took that off of the old Lakeside Lanes website. The 2, the 3, the 6, and the 10 for Wind Trapped and for a spare, and a piece of wood's going to come around, but leaving the 2 and the 3 goalposts. 8, 9, or 10 box for Wind Trapped in here on lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. You are watching the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour, the D Northern Conference match between Wind Trapped and Brian Hebert. Wind Trapped and our away bowler challenging home bowler Brian Hebert. Wynn Trafton is in the playoffs brackets right now, leader of his division. And he took an eight box, leaving the two and the three pins in the previous box there. Lane 23 fires orange pin, head pin. He's off to the right of that orange pin, head pin, leaving the four horsemen left side and the nine pin. Five down, five up. Hitting the one two pocket will assuredly spare this. Let's see what he can do. He releases and only takes out the nine pin. Something off with the release there, and I think he knew it when he released. But now he's just left with the four horsemen left side, the one, the two, the four, and the seven pins. Win Trafton fires on lane 23, and he's left with just the orange pin head pin for 78 after nine. Win Trafton. Lakeside Lanes has a soundproofing system in which 85% of all sound is absorbed. You can... You appreciate that when you go to some other houses where the soundproofing isn't quite as good. I know uh, my ears end up ringing at Riverwalk Lanes and at Central Park Lanes, but at Lakeside Lanes, it's very nicely managed. Wind trapped and dropping five, the one, the three, the six, the ten, and the eight pins on the deck. This is a mirror image of the previous spare leave that he had in the previous box. And similar to the previous box, a little bit different. He takes, he hits the object head pin, but he takes just the head pin and the eight pin leaving the three, the six, and the ten pins. Takes out the six and the ten pins for a nine box. That is going to leave him at 87 for the second game. He had a 99 in the first and an 87 in the second. Now Brian Hebert, markless in the first half. If he goes markless in the second half, he will beat Win Trafton. But we'd like to see some marks. Let's try to see some marks here, Brian. And he missed the head pin to the left. He's left with the one, the three, a wiggly six, and the seven pin on the deck. Brian Hebert for a spare leave, and he misses wide right. The same four pins are on the deck as they were just a few seconds ago. And that's going to be a six box for Brian Hebert, unfortunately. That's 48 after six. Compare that to Win Trafton's 51 after six at the same point in the game. Owner Tim Lipke, his son Shane Lipke, and Bobby Greco, as well as so many other people who work here, do an amazing job keeping this place looking and feeling, sounding, and just being overall great here at Lakeside Lanes. 
There's a lot of leagues, really fun and unique pools for things such as four strikes in a row, 50 over your average, and the orange pin pool, of course. The orange pin pool is when the head pin is placed down in the pin setter as the orange pin, and you saw that a couple of boxes ago. And if you get a strike or a spare while that pin was set down as the head pin, you get entered into a raffle. And that is how the orange pin pool works. I've won it, I think, twice in the past couple of years. Brian Hebert taking a nine box in the seventh for 57 and seven. Compare that to Win Trafton, 61 and seven. The game not a runaway by any stretch of the term in either game or match. It's also still early. We're just concluding the second game out of five here. Brian missing wide left, just taking the seven pin out. So one down, nine up. Lakeside Lanes uses manual scoring and manual lane resetting with CompuScore being the scoring software used. Brian Hebert for a spare and he takes a couple more out. That's not a spare, but it's more than one, certainly. It's four. Six up, four down. And four it will be, my goodness. That's 61 after eight for Brian Hebert. With two to go, the benchmark for Brian to tie is 87. If he wants to get two points instead of one point, he'll need to get 88. Compared to Lita Lanes, Lakeside Lanes' ball returns are positioned a bit further down the approach, about four or five feet from what I can tell. This may slightly alter your perception of lane length as well as maybe mess with where your starting position is when you go to bowl. Brian dropping four, taking out only the four horsemen left side of a fresh deck. And he's left with six. That's like the baby. That's like the baby bowling set. <laughs> you know the baby bowling set, which is just six pins. It's often attached to strings and it's like got like a little like push pedal thing to reset it. I don't know, I had one as a kid. That's gonna be a seven box for Brian. Hard font seven box. These leaves are fun to talk about, but it's not so fun when you're bowling and you have to deal with this. So that's 68 after nine for Brian Hebert versus 78 after eight for, excuse me, 68 after nine for Brian Hebert, 78 after nine for Win Trafton. Brian, wow, he hits the three and the five pins and nothing else. That is a interesting shot to get. Lakeside Lanes is a bit of a slower house, so I'm not entirely surprised by that kind of a shot, but it's still kind of shocking nonetheless when you see that. And he takes just one more out. Hopefully this isn't going to be a disastrous th uh, three box. But let's see. From three to ten, that's what this box is going to be for Brian Hebert. And oh my goodness, it's the worst case scenario. That's a three box for Brian Hebert, and that's going to be 71 after ten. When trapped in at 87 after ten. When trapped in... Presently batting a thousand in terms of game and points. He's taken four points so far this match. With three to go here at the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. In case you missed it, here's the matchup today. It is Win Trafton versus Brian Hebert. We have Brian Hebert, of course, in the 11th and D North Division 4. We got Win Trafton, third place, who is currently in the playoff bracket. Here's where we are in standings to give you a bit more context. Win Trafton currently at the top of Division One, and Brian Hebert in third place at Division Four. He's in a pretty stacked division overall, I'd say. Division leaders overall. Brian is not too far out of the wild card, but he has some work to do. Win Trafton is in because he's a division leader. I'll show you some more stats in a little bit when we have some free time here. Win Trafton, meanwhile, starting in lane 24, and he's dropping five. The one, the two, the five, the eight, and the nine pins are on the deck right now. Win Trafton recently bowled Bill Olsen in round 14 at Lita Lanes, and Win Trafton took a perfect 14-0, taking all 14 points, and that is a spare by Win Trafton. There's the mark he was looking for all last game, and he's certainly happy to see that. Fix something here real quick. Sorry about that. That's a 10 plus a ball after one for Win Trafton in the third. He had a two game total of 186. In that match versus Bill Olson, Win took a 531 series, and he will take a three fill on that on that spare. Unfortunately, he punches deep through the center, taking out the one, the five, and the eight pins. 13 after one for Win Trafton. 
dur during that match versus Bill Olsen when Trafton averaged 106.2, which is over his season average. The third game was his best at 126. And Drafton having a bit of a disastrous second ball follow-up to that first first box spare with a three fill. And right now we're looking at an eight box. But Wynn Trafton, 21 after two. 21 after two for Wynn Trafton, the owner of the Purple Haze Farm in Wilton, New Hampshire since 2016. Check out the Facebook page. Wynn Trafton, outside of bowling, enjoys macro photography of plant life. He showed me some very detailed up-close shots of some very pretty flora and fauna and all kinds of other plant life thing, plant-like things. I'm not really a plant person, so please forgive me about that. When trapped in lane 24 on the head pin this time, pin still falling, 7-10 split, 10-pin wiggling. Plenty of favorable wood to possibly take this out. Let's see what when trapped it can do with this 7-10 split with wood, which is definitely helping. Or will help, that is. Win Trafton versus the 7-10 split. And oh my goodness, that piece of wood on the left just danced in front of the 7-pin, mocking it. Didn't take it out. 7-pin survives the 7-10 split with wood. Win Trafton versus the 7-pin on lane 24 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. And that is going to be a 9-box for Win Trafton. 30 after 3. 30 after 3 for Win Trafton. Win Trafton again, his record when he's away is 49 and 35. That's a 1.4 win loss ratio. It's considerably under his home record of 78 and 34. Some bowlers do well when away, some bowlers do well versus home. I know uh, myself and Kevin Dietrich, we both do better when we're away. But some bowlers, it's the opposite. So you never know. When Trafton seems to do very well at Lita, I see him almost every Monday practicing at Lita. When I come in for league, I see him just plugging away on some random lane at Lita Lanes, just trying to better himself and Camelton bowling. And hey, practice makes perfect. When Trafton dropping five, the one, the two, the seven, the nine, and the ten pins on the deck. Takes out a few more, leaving the one and the ten pin. One in the 10 pin for Win Trafton. No wood to help him. That's the high low jack minus the seven pin. Here in the D Northern Conference, and he takes it. He takes the 10 box, hitting the pocket of the head pin just the right way for 40 after four. Trafton now. Lane 24. Taking out a few more pins. And it looks like the 7 and the 8 pins with no wood to help him. Well, that's kind of a lie. That piece of wood in the front may or may not help him. I sort of discounted it, honestly, because it was a situation where I was a little bit worried in which it could have just sailed around and taken nothing. But it's Win Trafton versus the seven pin now, and it's going to be a 10 box for Win Trafton. He's going to sit on a 50 half. So 50, uh, 50 with one mark after five for Wintrafton. Brian Hebert releasing off the left of the head pin. The one, the five, the three, the eight, and the nine pins are what he has to work with today. And he releases, taking one more out. The one, the three, the five, and the nine pins are what Brian Hebert has to work with right now. He releases again. He takes out two more pins for an eight box. That's eight after one for Brian Hebert. Compare that to 13 after one for Wynn Trafton. Brian Hebert's home record is 42 and 56. That's a 0.75 win-loss ratio. Again, that is under his away record of 48 and 50, which is a 0.96 win-loss ratio. 
He has a season average of 96.1. Again, that's 24th in the D-Class. He's currently third in a stacked D-North Division IV. He's ahead of Kevin Martell, but he's behind Bill Olsen and Jonathan Hogan, both of which have had banner seasons this season, both with over 100 wins as of today. Brian Hebert versus the 8-pin on the deck, and he misses it. He took his, like he said, he took his bid, and sometimes the bid doesn't take you. Brian Hebert for a 9 or a 10 box. It's going to be a 10 box for Mr. Brian Hebert. That's 18 after 2 for Brian Hebert. No marks yet in the third game here. Brian Hebert, high single 128, high series 529 this season. Taking out five more, that's the four horsemen left side and the five pin. Four horsemen left side plus a friend along for the ride. This is a spare bid for Brian Hebert. Let's get a closer look at this. The ball returns are a little bit slow on lanes 23 and 24, so that's why we're a little bit on a slightly slower pace today. But not really that much of a big deal. It's a nice, quiet Friday afternoon. And will he get the spare? It looked like he had a bit of trouble on his release. He takes out all but the 10-pin, though. It was a good bid, at least. A piece of wood settling. I want to say I think it's in. We'll verify that, but... Every house has the Deadwood line to be perceived as slightly closer or farther away from you, depending on the placement of the wall above the pin setter, because the placement of that wall is on the z-axis a little bit different in every house. That's so just design things. But it was in play. It looked like it was in play. And Lakeside Lanes, if it's basically in the light, you're still mostly good. Anyways, that's 27 after 3 for Brian Hebert after that 9 box with 2 to go in the first half. When Trafton had a 50 half for comparison. More than halfway there. Brian Hebert drops 7. That's the right side setback plus the 6 pin. That's the 4, the 5, and the 10 pins. Excuse me, the 5, the 6, and the 10 pins. Brian Heber for a spare bid, and he's going to caress all those pins down for a spare. Nicely placed spare by Brian Hebert for 37 plus a ball in the fourth. That will put him in good positioning to get to 50 for the half of the third game, first half of the third game. And it looks like another... Three fill. Three fill seem to be the name of the game today for both of our bowlers, so that puts him at 40 after four. This is a difficult spare bid for Brian Hebert. So we were looking at the one, the five, the three, the six, the seven, the nine, and the ten pins. More or less the left half of the deck is gone except for the seven pin. That seven pin makes it difficult, and Brian misses everything, sails into the void. Probably would have been another half Worcester if those pins were existing. So he's looking at, my goodness, a three, anywhere from a three to a ten box. And we're just waiting on a slow ball return now, so let's go to B-roll. So again, we'll take another look at the standings here. Brian Hebert is sitting two places out of the wild card spot, has to pass three people to get in. Win Trafton currently sitting at the number three seed as he is the leader of his division. And overall, the Class D averages, here we are. Wind trapped in a little bit higher than Brian Hebert overall. Wind's average is 100.79. Brian Hebert is 96.14. All right, we have another bowling ball to work with. Brian Hebert will take a nine box for 49 after five. So this is a somewhat even match. We have Brian Hebert at 49 after five and Wind Trafton at 50 after five. Both bowlers with one mark and a three fill on said mark. And very comparable boxes overall. Eight, nine, or ten generally is the story for both of our bowlers. And we are at exactly halftime at two and a half games completed. We draft in now, starting out the second half of our match today on lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes. He's on the pocket, pin still falling, seven drop. Five, seven, and eight pins are on the deck. 
We're having a fantastic time here at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire, watching Win Trapton bowl against defending home bowler Brian Hebert. And look at that spare by Win Trapton. He takes out that dreaded, that dreaded uh, three pin array. My apologies. I don't know why I can't remember pin numbers today. But anyways, that's a, the <laughs> the short of it is that's 60 plus a ball on the six for Win Trapton. If you're just joining us, thank you for checking out this Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour match. This D Northern Conference match later in the season. That's a four fill for Win Trafton. Again, these somewhat disappointing fills. They're big opportunities to jump ahead in terms of total, but when you get fills like that, it doesn't propel you that much forward. Win Trafton for a spare bid. He kisses the head pin and takes just a few more out, leaving the two, the eight, the six, and the ten pins. Let's get a closer look at that so you can see that a little bit better. It'll be a difficult 6 through 10 box for Wintrafton. One more goes down. That's a 7 box. 7 box for Trafton. That puts him at 71 through 7. Wintrafton lane 23. Fires and takes out five immediately, leaves the four horsemen left side and the nine pin on the deck. The one, the two, the four, the seven, and the nine pins are what he has to work with right now. Trafton prepares, he winds up, he pitches, and he leaves one and nine. The thing about this shot is you kind of have to hit it full in order to really do anything with it. Sort of a difficult shot to contend with. And it's going to be a nine box overall for Windraft and a hard fought nine box, putting him at 80 after eight. Here's where we are with two to go for Win to win for Win Trafton before we read off his three game total. He's at 80 after eight, on track for his average of hundred. Win Trafton lane 23. He pitches. He's off to the right, and again, same shot. Four horsemen left side, plus the nine pin. Deja vu. This time with a piece of wood right behind the two pin, crossing over to the one pin. We're drafting on the spare bid, and he leaves everything but the head pin. Missing the head pin, one, two pocket, hitting the two, four pocket instead. The solo head pin is the only one when Trafton has to hit now for a 10 box. And he's going to take a nine box for 89 and nine for Wynn Trafton. Folks, if you live in the area or are willing to make the pilgrimage, the Candlepin Bowling community would absolutely appreciate your interest and visitation. You should check out candlepin.org and click Go Bowling to find your nearest center if you would like to give this unique regional sport a try if you think this is fun. Wind trapped and dropping seven, the six, seven, ten pins with a piece of wood. He has to redline that piece of wood to have any chance of getting it, and will it take the seven? The seven falls late, and that's going to be his third mark of the game. That's going to put him at 99 and a ball. For Mr. Wind Trafton. 99 and a ball for Mr. Wind Trafton. This is. Basically house pins right now. It's bonus pins. A decent fill will put him in good positioning overall against Brian. Over his average overall, he's at 106 with that seven fill. To conclude three games with 292 for Win Trafton. Overall slightly under his average of roughly 100. But so far he's taken four points. And we'll see if Brian Hebert can match 106 or better to take points this game. Brian Hebert wasting no time, releasing on lane 23, dropping seven. It looks almost very similar to the shot that Win Trafton had, but with less favorable wood. The five, the seven, and the eight pins are on the deck on lane 23. Brian Hebert for a spare bid, and he takes one more out for the road, leaving the five and the seven pins on the deck. Five and the seven pins on the deck for a 10 box. Eight, nine, or 10, it's going to be an eight box for Brian Hebert with 57 and six. Wintrafton at this point had a mark with a four fill. He had 64 and six by this point. 
So Brian has some work to do. A mark with a good fill will definitely put him right back in it. As when Trafton's non-mark balls were non-mark boxes were seven and nine. Hebert releases awkwardly. The ball careens a little bit to the right. Takes out three, leaving seven on the deck for a spare bid. Hebert fires on the head pin this time, but a little bit too full, leaving the three and the four pins on the deck. 8, 9, or 10 box for Brian Hebert to conclude the seventh box. And it's going to be a 9 box for 66 in 7 for Mr. Brian Hebert. In case you missed it, Brian Hebert's seasonal record is 90 and 106 after 14 matches. His home record is 42.56. His away record is 48.50. Season average a 96.1. He's third in D North Division 4. Perfect box percentage of 33, 20 strikes, 116 spares, 94 tens, 6,730 seasonal total pins. Brian Heber for a spare bid and difficult shot, and he almost gets it. He leaves all but the 10 pin on the deck. With Brian, it's feast or famine. Sometimes he takes double digit points, 10 to 12, within a match. Otherwise, he takes between 0 and 4, according to the numbers. And we'll have more details when we do the numbers coming right up. Speaking of numbers, Brian is eighth in terms of most spares in the D-Class at 116, not counting this match. He has four matches over 500. He averages 1.43 strikes per match, 8.29 spares per match, 6.71 tens per match. He takes 5.25 average points per home match, 6.8 average points per match when he's away. And in the past five matches, he has taken 30 points, which is down four compared to his previous set of five. Brian Hebert fighting hard for an eight box, and eight box it is for 83 and nine. Compare that to 89 and nine for Wintrafton. So it comes down to a mark and a fill in the 10th for Brian Hebert to take two points. So far he's pointless. Well, not pointless, but you know what I mean. Ryan Hebert off the head pin to the right. Four horsemen left side, plus the eight, the six, and the ten pins with no wood to help him. Three down, seven up. Ryan for the spare. He needs this spare, and he punches left. Complete Worcester, plus a couple extra friends. The one, the four, the six, the seven, and the ten pins. as a banana split, plus the head pin. Brian Hebert for something better than a five, and man, that's gonna be a rough five box for Brian Hebert, putting him at 88 after 10 for a three game total of 255 versus Win Trafton's three game total of 292. Win Trafton cur currently taking all points at the moment. Win Trafton with a three mark 106, Brian Hebert with a one mark 88. Here at the Atlantic Hamilton Singles Tour, let's take a look at some superlatives while we're just transitioning in between games here. You'll see that Win Trafton is basically on the superlative roster here, all the way up and down the line in terms of perfect box percentage and high singles. And hey, let's talk about a couple of tournaments coming up, particularly in a day and a half here. We have Ray's Easter Classic on Sunday, March 31st, Easter Sunday. Come on down to Little Lanes if you want to see it. There might be a couple of live streams here and there. Some bowlers, I think, may be streaming. I won't be streaming it. I am bowling in it. I can't possibly do both at the same time. But some bowlers braver than myself try it. Ray's Easter Classic, a 20-day all-day game tournament at Lita Lanes. And that's the one that's coming up most soonish here in about under 48 hours or so, I'd say, at this point. Win Trafton opening up the fourth game with a five drop. The one, the five, the three, the six, and the ten pins on the deck. Taking out a few more, he's left with just the head pin. for a nine or a 10 box for Win Trafton. Win Trafton. He'll take that 10 box, completing the 10 box for 10 after one in the fourth. In case you missed it, Win Trafton has taken six points so far, 99, 87, 106 for the first three games. Trafton with 7,055 seasonal total pins. High single 143, high series 543. On the 1-3 pocket, he releases and he's left with the three and the five pins on the deck on lane 24. 
Here, Lakeside Landings in Manchester, New Hampshire. Decent spare leave. But if you hit a piece of wood the wrong way, things can go wrong. You can opt to hit the piece of wood that's facing us slightly light from the left side. And it looked like Wind Trapton thought of that, but he missed it. So that piece of wood is still there, and he's left with the three, the excuse me, the two in the five pins. He could redline the other piece of wood to possibly get it. It depends on ball velocity, really, to get that. But he caps the wood. The ball lists in a favorable fashion towards the two pins. And that's another 10 box for Wind Trafton, a double 10, 20 after two. Uh, the three pin was missing on that rack and uh, unfortunately I couldn't yell fast enough I had to contort myself to, to yell in that direction sorry about that uh, we're going to do a redo on that box because officially you got to shoot at ten pins <laughs> a little bit harder to see sometimes admittedly so any chance you can see it and if anyone is watching this in the comments hey there's always one funny mistake in every match Sometimes you feel bad though because that I think the first ball was definitely a bit of a better bid. But hey, you gotta shoot at ten. Wind Trafton looking at the one, the three, the five, the six, the nine, and the ten pins on lane twenty-four. And there's seven pins down, three up, one nine ten. No spare, but it could be a seven, eight, nine, or ten for Wind Trafton in the third. Let's see if he continues his streak of tens. He releases on lane 24, and it's another 10. Three tens, triple X. That's 30 after three for Win Trafton. Hasn't missed a pin yet. Nine pins be darned. There's two boxes to go for Win Trafton. And so far, he's fishing for a mark, but he hasn't missed anything. It's the weirdest position to be in, but when you average 100, it's not too bad. Wind Trafton on the head pin, he drops 9 Im almost immediately, leaving the 10 pin and some wood around it. The wood isn't really going to help unless he really beans the center cluster there. It's a single pin spare. You can either try your luck by hitting the wood, or you can go for the 10 pin directly. Depends on your comfort zone as a bowler. Wind Trafton will miss. He'll try the direct approach, but he misses the ball to the right towards the very end. Misses the pin to the right at the very end. And you always then kick yourself. You say, no, I should have played the wood. No, I should have done this, that. And that's, yeah, the eternal debates, the eternal what ifs, the eternal alternate timelines. And look, there's the alternate timeline right there playing off one ball later. That's four tens in a row for Winter Hapton, 40 after four. I'll tell you, if on certain computer score systems like CompuScore, a 10 is scored as X. And if you didn't know any better and thought those were strikes, you'd be like, wow, he's doing great. But it's only 40. Still not bad, though. Tens are not bad. Don't ever consider tens to be bad boxes. Sure, it's like a spare with a zero fill, but don't worry about it. Doesn't mean you're missing. It means you're pinning things out really well, and you're not leaving any pins for the pin setter. Pin setter goes hungry. When trapped in a little bit too full in the head pin, he's really trying to fish for a mark or a strike, but he's left with the spread eagle now. The two, the three, the four, the six, the seven, and the ten pins with a piece of wood between the four and the seven pins, but it's not really going to matter here nor there in terms of firing. You have to pick a side and spray and pray. Taking a few more out, the two, the three, the six, and the ten pins are left in the deck for Wind Trafton. And if you're careful about it, taking the two pin out and kicking that piece of wood might take everything out, but he sails through the center, hitting only the piece of wood, taking one out for a seven box, his first non-ten of the game. 47 after five for Wind Trafton. And here is, uh, so here's some uh, stats about Lakeside Lanes itself, established the same year as Lita Lanes, 1959, with 24 lanes, all wood approaches, all wood lanes. Manual scoring via Compu Score, oldie but goodie. 25th lane is the bar and seating area at Lakeside Lanes. Brian Heber's first ball sails off to the right, taking out three and three only. Overall, Lakeside Lanes is just a swell place. 
It's kind of a cute little, tiny little bowling alley in busy Manchester by the massive music lake. Brian Heber for a 7, 8, 9, or 10 box. He's going to take an 8 box or 8 after 1. Wynn Trafton has one more strike than Brian Hebert for the match, not counting this ma not counting this match, but there have been no strikes thrown this match thus far. Brian Hebert winding up for the first ball, the second box. And he releases, dropping five. The four horsemen right side, plus the eight pin in the back row, are left on the deck. That's the one, the three, the six, and the ten pin, along with the eight pin. Have to hit the 1 3 pocket to do much of anything with this, and he hits the head pin a little bit too full. The 1 and the 3 go, but the 6, the 8, and the 10 pins remain on the deck. Two pieces of wood, one along the 8 pin, which might be somewhat helpful, and another piece of wood patrolling the front of those 3 pins facing us. And that one is probably going to be more or less helpful. It could be helpful, but it's a risky hit. Brian tries to play it, and it just spins around, colliding with nothing else, and it doesn't even leave the deck. But that's a seven box for Brian Hebert. Fifteen after two for Mr. Hebert. If you're just joining us, thank you for checking out this Atlantic Canalpin Singles Tour match between away bowler Win Trafton and home bowler Brian Hebert at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. Having a fantastic time here. The D class of the ACST has a north and a south half with four divisions between the two of them. Each class presently has 32 bowlers, 16 in north and 16 in south. Brian Heber trying to make a spare out of a four horseman left side plus nine pin situation. We've seen a lot of that shot today, oddly enough. But he leaves the head pin, unfortunately. He missed the, missed the object pocket. That's the nine pin. That's the head pin remaining for a nine box, 24 after three for Brian Hebert now. So again, there's a maximum of 14 available points per ACST match. Two points are awarded to the winner of each game. The bowler whose cumulative total is the highest results in an additional four points awarded. A tie and a string will award each bowler with one point. Brian taking out just a few more pins again, and it looked like it was going to be a half Worcester, but the 10 pin falls along with it. Along with the 5 pin, too, so four pins down, six pins up. And he sails through the hole of the left side half Worcester once again. Already aimed there. Very consistent for Ryan Hebert. Sometimes consistently, consistency can kind of bite you. But he'll take everything out for a 10 box, 3 ball spare, Paul Grant special, 34 after 4 for Ryan Hebert. Miss the second, get the third. The D-class seems to average anywhere between 87 to 104, according to the average bracket. Wynn Trafton is towards the top of that bracket, while Brian Hebert is kind of somewhat in the middle of that bracket. Definitely a diverse cast of averages across some of these classes. The D-class can result in a lot of exciting matches, though, honestly. Don't let the letter D fool you. It's just we have so many bowlers, and we got to just sort by averages and records, so that's just where people end up landing. So Brian, frustrated by that ball, he's going to take a six box for a frustrating 40 after five. Seven pins down from Wynn Trafton's Markless 47 after five. Both bowlers Markless here in the first half of the fourth game. Anyways, continuing our discussion about lakeside lanes, it's... WMUR definitely likes Lakeside Lanes, voter, voted WMUR's Viewer's Choice Best Bowling Alley four times, 2015, 2017, 2019, and 2021. This so one trapped and fires on lane 23. He's really fishing for a mark after four tens and a seven. Taking out six pins so far. Extend the camera a little bit so you can see the top of the pins there. Sometimes we set the zoom cam and sometimes the vibrations of all the bowling going on kind of offsets it ever so slightly as the match progresses. So that's why we have to make a couple of micro adjustments here and there. That and the fact that when we're setting up these streaming, streaming cameras and stuff, everything is always kind of by the seat of our pants when we set this stuff up every single time because we never know what the situation is going to be when we get to the alley. That's a nine box for Win Trapton. That's 56 after six. Trafton 
has currently taken six points thus far out of this five-game series. I would say none of these matches have been out of Brian's reach. They've always been within one or two marks in terms of how close they are, but sometimes it just comes down to in the moment and if you can deliver. And sometimes it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Wintrafton, difficult spare leave here. There was the five, the eight, the nine, the ten pins. He takes out only the five and the eight, leaving the nine and the ten pins on the deck. Eight, nine, or ten box for Win Trafton now. He's going to take a nine box. That is 65 after seven. 65 after seven for Mr. Trafton with three to go. He averages, yeah, for the sake of argument, we'll say right around the ballpark of 100. So that's the benchmark I hold him to in terms of if he's on target. When Trafton fires on lane 23, a little bit too full in the head pin. Once again, the spread eagle minus the 10 pin. The 2, the 3, the 4, the 6, and the 7 pins are on the deck. When Trafton for a difficult spare bid here, and he takes out just the 3 pin and nothing else. Pins dance around, but not a whole lot else going on. Trafton for a 10 box, and he'll take, hey, a 9 box. That's not bad. He'll go for 74 after 8. So did you know that Candlepin Bowling was first played in 1880 in Worcester, Massachusetts? It's thought to have been developed by a man named Justin White, owner of a billiards and bowling hall. Fun facts. When Trafton releases on lane 23, dropping 7, 3, 4, 6. Spare bid. Again, admittedly difficult. It's sort of a reduced version of the spread eagle for when drafting. He nearly gets it. That piece of wood almost coming back to take the four pin, but it doesn't go. Nine or ten box for when drafting. When Trafton releases and it's going to be a nine box. 83 and nine for when Trafton. Fun fact about Candlepin Bowling, no one has recorded a perfect game in the existence of Candlepin Bowling officially. The highest score is 245 out of 300. Candlepin Bowling is obviously considered harder than standard 10-pin bowling due to the smaller ball and tricky pin arrangement. The International Candlepin Bowling Association, or ICBA, was founded on January 9, 1986. The formation of the ICBA was prompted by a desire to unify the sport so that the Candlepin bowlers would be bowling under the same conditions and rules no matter where they bowl. When trapped and missing the spare on the four horsemen left side, by the way. The ICBA is an umbrella organization that consists of delegates from each state and provincial association that includes U.S. and Canada. And that's a nine box for when trapped and concluding the fourth game. 92 after 10. Markless once again. Not bad in terms of pinning it out without marks, but still. A mark definitely would have put him over 100, but sometimes that's how the pin falls. Brian Hebert with a 40 after 5, and he's got some work to do once again. Not to repeat myself all too much, but that's what he has to do here. Hebert dropping 8. That is a honorable first ball for the work he has to do to get some marks. That is the 6 and the 10 pin with a piece of wood possibly rolling into view. He's going to release against the 6 and the 10, and he's going to get a spare. Yes, spares do exist in this match, and we just saw one. That's 50 plus a ball after 6 for Brian Hebert. Like I said, Candlepin Bowling is primarily played in the Canadian Maritime Provinces and the New England region of the United States. And yeah, as more talk about the ICBA. Yeah, the ICBA is kind of like the formation of the NFL or the merger of the AFL and the all the other football leagues and conferences. The ICBA, I don't think, really had divisions like that quite so, but the ICBA unified how the sport is constructed, the shape of pins, the standard, you know, volume of bowling balls, weight and all that, and all manner of things. 
So that's a four fill and a nine box for Brian Hebert. Sorry, I'm yakking a bit too much here. That's 63 and seven for Brian Hebert. Three to go. He fires on lane 23. He's off to the head pin to the left, dropping three. One, two, three, five, six, nine, and ten pins are left on the deck. Brian Hebert releases a little bit too full on the head pin, takes out a few more. There's seven down and three up. The two, the six, and the ten pins are now left on lane 23 at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. Brian Hebert for the ten box, and it's going to be a nine box for Mr. Hebert. That's 72 after eight. Your score update, Brian Hebert is at 72 after eight, where Wynn Trafton was at 74 after eight. Still a fairly tight match. Brian Hebert with a mark, while Wynn Trafton was markless. So things are getting interesting now. He might take two points yet. Dropping seven, that's a favorable spare leave. Leaving the two, the seven, and the eight pins with some wood on the deck. Hitting it almost anywhere will take all three out. Will that be a spare for Brian Hebert? Yes, it will. Yes, it will be, that is. That puts him at 82 plus a ball and nine. So I just quickly correct that. There we go. 82 plus a ball and nine for Brian Hebert. And filling that spare, hopefully it's going to be more than four. It's going to be seven. That looks like that's going to effectively be the game for Brian Hebert. Yes, because he's at 89 and nine. And he's already guaranteed seven. So that is assuredly two points for Brian Hebert. Congratulations to Brian Hebert for at least two points and almost getting the third spare of the match. The pin's just not falling in the correct direction. He hit it right. The one the, s the one, the eight pins are the ones that are taken out, but the nine pins stares him down. Nine or ten box for Brian Hebert. It's going to be a ten box for 99 in four, and hey, he'll take some points. Brian Hebert at 99 after f at 99 in the fourth for a four game total of 354. Win Trafton, four game total of 384 with his 92. Brian Hebert guaranteed at least two points this match. Win Trafton guaranteed at least six points this match. And so that brings us to the fifth and final game. And the fifth and final game, might I remind you, is important because this will be the final chance for bowlers to take the grand total pinfall, which is worth four points, in addition to the two points they can get for winning the game. The fifth game, that is. Win Trafton currently has an advantage of 30 pins across the first four games. So it's not exactly a runaway. So if Brian has a runaway game and Win Trafton has a down game, he can potentially take six, six points this game added on top of the two points that he already won in the fourth game. So those are the ground rules. That's how this fifth game is going to be set up. And so folks, as we finish up the fifth, as we finish up this match with the fifth game, want to just tell you about a couple other things going on. Later on tonight, I will be teaming up with Paul Grant at East Boston, Massachusetts at Central Park Lanes to be streaming the Friday Night Pro League. It's going to be Central Park Lanes 3 versus Metro Bowl. It's going to be a great match. Metro Bowl hasn't been covered all that much this season in the Friday Night Pro League. Should be a fun time. We'll see you there. I think the start time is going to be roughly, give or take, 7 p.m. tonight. After the conclusion of this match, I'm going to grab something to eat, and then I'll be driving down to East Boston. So we'll be meeting you on Candlepin Bowling Network for that stream if everything works out. Wintraft and dropping six on lane 24. And he takes a few more out from that six drop, leaving the eight pin on the deck. Let's get a closer look at that. Piece of wood rolling across the eight pin. Still rolling. Anybody know any jokes? Got any games on your phone? Waiting for that piece of wood to settle. Still rolling, still rolling. And I'd say it's probably good enough to settle. There is kind of a statute of patience in terms of waiting for a piece of wood to settle. I'd definitely agree. If you're standing around waiting for a deck to settle a pin, then sometimes it can just be a bit frustrating to wait. That's a 10 box for Wind Trafton. 10 after 1. Win Trafton, fourth high single in the D class at 143, fourth most tens at 146. Recently blew out Bill Olson 14 0 at Lita Lanes in round 14, coming off a big win streak. Win Trafton and standing to continue the win streak, although it won't be 14 0 because Brian took at least two, po two points so far. Win Trafton dropping seven, leaving the two, the four, and the six pins on lane 24. 
And this might be an interesting spare leave. If you hit the two pin the right way, they're all gonna go. Let's see if they go. And they do go. Just the way we drew it up in the locker room. Great game plan there, Win. That's a spare. That's 20 after one. Uh, 20 after two, that is. 20 plus a ball after two. With that spare, the first spare of the fifth game. Not super fair because it's only been two boxes. Win Trafton, filling a spare with seven, maybe eight. It's gonna be seven, 27 after two. No, it's gonna be 28 after two, a late falling pin. I counted it up and it fell very late. One and the eight pins are left in the deck. A full shot will take this out for another spare. That's the thing about candle pin, you don't get in 10 pin. 10 pin always brings down the pin tubes and sucks up the pins to clear away dead wood. In candle pin, the dead wood is always in play and it means late pinfall can always happen, as opposed to 10-pin where the fat bulbous pins don't wiggle and fall nearly as much as they do in candle pin, which are just straight and tubular. And that's another... No, sorry, that's a 10-box for Wind Trafton. That's 38 after 3. Thirty-eight, 38 after 3 for Wind Trafton with two to go before he sits. One mark in the first half of the fifth game so far. 10, spare eight, 10. He's gearing up on lane 24 here at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. You're watching Wynn Trafton in the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour Class D Northern Conference. Wynn Trafton with a record of 127 and 69, our number three seed versus Brian Hebert at 90 and 106, three places out of the wild card. Trafton drops nine with a four pin on the deck and he misses that four pin single pin spare. So looking at a nine or a ten box now. Win Trafton. He releases and it's going to be a nine box. For 47 and four for Win Trafton. He leads D North Division One ahead of Sarah Wright, Sherelle Neeland, and Todd Holbrook. And Trafton on lane 24, Lakeside Lanes. He fires for a strike bid. Hits the head pin, hits the pocket, hits it right. The four and the seven pins are all that's left on the deck. Decent spare bid for Win Trafton now with a piece of wood across the four and the seven pins. Not a whole lot can go wrong with this kind of shot. I've been wrong before, but we'll see what happens. And it just as thought. That's a good half for Win Trafton, as Brian Hebert remarked. That's a spare. 57 plus a ball after five for Win Trafton. Two marks, spare eight, and a spare to be continued in the second half. Win Trafton is positioning himself quite well to maintain the match lead. He came into this game with a match lead of 30 after the first four games. He's taken six points in the match so far. Brian's taken two. Brian dropping five with the four horsemen left side, plus the eight pin. He drops everything but the seven pin for his spare bid. Brian Hebert versus the seven pin for a 10 box now. It's going to be a nine box. Nine after one for Brian Hebert. Brian Hebert, lane 24, strike bid, dropping six. The four, six, nine, and 10. Excuse me, the three, six, nine, and 10. Profusely apologies, I profusely apologize for my inability to name pin numbers today. So four pins to, for a spare bid for Brian Hebert, and oh, wow, he, I have no words for how good that shot looked on paper and visually, and how it didn't take every pin out. He's left with the nine pin, the nine pin only on lane 24. That is a 10 box for Brian Hebert, 19 after two. So before we go, um, we're here in the fifth game towards the end, so I just wanna give a couple of special thanks and shout outs to our ACST League Commissioner, Danny Finn. Next Gen Stats, powered by Micah Imperato, who really helps me with generating a lot of the stats and facts and figures for bowlers that I can kind of riff off of. 
Brian Hebert for statistical graphs used in this broadcast that I kind of use as a springboard for the designs and such. He designs a lot of the visual design directions for the PowerPoints and other kinds of scorecards and things. Greatly appreciate that, Brian. Brian is who is bowling right now. He's working on a 7, 8, 9, or 10 box. He's going to take an 8 box. Uh, special thanks to the staff at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. I know uh, Shane Lipke is actually watching this match off to the left of me. And you, all of you guys, bowling, uh, commenting, liking, subscribing, whatever you're doing. If you're in the sphere, just thanks for watching and thanks for tuning into the ACST match after match after match. Appreciate your participation. We're a bit of a small community in the Candlepin bowling world, and we always hope to grow it, but we always appreciate your participation in any way we can see it. And Brian Hebert with a yes. late falling strike. How about that for the first strike of the match? That's a very late falling strike bid for Brian Hebert. That does go, so he's at 37 plus two balls after four. I was almost getting worried that I wasn't going to be able to use the strike symbol today in my scoreboard, but here it is. Let's see what Brian can do. He's working on the strike. Ooh, boy, that ball gave him the jitters for sure. That's one so far for the fill. Don't worry, you get two for a strike. The first two balls count as a fill. Let's see what he can do to follow up. And, oh, boy, that's a three fill for Ryan Hebert. He punches out the right side half Worcester in addition to the ten pin. That's a three fill, 13 box in the fourth for 40 after four for Brian Hebert. Waiting on a slow ball return once again. Folks, if uh, you think Candlepin Bowling is fun and you like it, go to candlepin.org and go bowling. Check out this map. A lot of bowling centers to check Candlepin Bowling out on. Also not shown are the Candlepin Bowling alleys in northeastern, uh, in the, you know, above the United States in Canada. Not northeastern Canada, but east, you know, the eastern province of Canada. That's an eight box for Brian Hebert. He'll sit on a 48 half. 48 half for Ryan Hebert and Win Trafton at 57 plus a ball after five. He will be starting shortly here. Take a look at Win Trafton's stats now that we have a brief few seconds here. Season average again, 100.8. So he's definitely on track for his average here in the fifth. Compare that to, oops, compare that to Brian Hebert, the home bowler. His average is 96.1, about 3.9 under-ish if we round a bit. So when Trafton now, we return, he is filling a spare. Here we go on the head pin, and it's going to be a strike. How about that? He fills that spare with 10, the best possible way to fill a spare. Trafton on a strike in the sixth. 77 plus a ball. The best possible scenario for Win Trafton right about now. Just maintain that 30 pin match lead he came in on and just continue riffing on it. That's the goal right now. Win Trafton on a strike. Strike on spare. And the first ball of that strike fill is due. But we won't count it until one more ball. So let's see what he can do now. Total pinfall after two balls is the strike fill value. It's going to be win. It's going to be, oh my goodness. It's going to be four. Low strike fills. 81 after six for Win Trafton. After that four fill on the strike. The one, the three, the five, the nine, the four, and the seven pins are left on the deck. Trafton fires for a ten box. Takes two more out for the road. That's a six box. An ugly six. Hard fought six. He didn't miss any pins, but didn't really get a lot to show for it. That's 87 after seven for Win Trafton. If you enjoyed what you saw and want to see more, I invite you to strike, comment, and subscribe to the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour page on Facebook as well as a bevy of other pages on YouTube and Facebook, known as Candlepin Bowling Network, Candlepin Corner, Alley Chat, the Candlepin Bowling Channel, and several others, where all kinds of other videos, streams, and productions are regularly posted in addition to results and statistics. If you're a returning viewer, it's been great to have you along once again, and hope you enjoyed this program. 
If you're into podcasts, there's Candlepin shows such as The Approach and Ripping the Rack. So check those out if you feel so inclined. That's a 10 box for Win Trafton, by the way. Hope this was a pleasant viewing experience for you. If you're brand new to the world of Candlepin Bowling content, I want to thank you for watching. We're just about to finish up Win Trafton's five games of this match. We'll know his match total here shortly. Dropping five for Horseman left side plus the 10 pin. This is his first ball for the ninth frame. Piece of wood clears. No wood to help him. One, two, four, seven, ten. One, two pocket will take this out. On the one, two pocket, just as predicted, it goes for a spare. That's 107 in the ninth, plus a ball for Wind Trafton. Over average already in the ninth. Decent Phil will have a spectacular five-game match total for Brian Hebert to contend with, and overall spectacular for the D-Class, spectacular for Wind Trafton. That is a four fill on the spare, putting him at 111 after nine. This could go one two or one three pocket. I would say one two pocket is safer. Let's see what one trafton can do. And he only takes out the three pin full on the three pin, leaving the four horsemen left side and the eight pin. One two four seven ten. One two four seven eight, excuse me. Again, pin numbers, not good at them today. That's going to be a five box for Wynn Trafton, concluding his fifth game at 116 for a five game total of 500 even for Wynn Trafton. That is an even average of 100 for these five games. If you evenly spread them across, 99, 87, 106, and 92, and 116 for Wynn Trafton after all is said and done. Brian Hebert with a four and a half game total of 402. He needs to find 98 pins to tie that 500 match total to score two pins for the total. Two points for the total, excuse me. And significantly more to take the game. So Brian Hebert needs to get marks, marks, marks. That's the name of this half for Brian Hebert. He drops five to start out the first ball of the second half of the final game. Two, four, five, seven, eight. I believe they might call that the Canadian hay bale. Not entirely sure. Could be tribal knowledge. Who knows? The four, the five, and the seven pins are all that's left for Brian Hebert for the third ball here. Seven, eight, nine, or ten box for Brian Hebert. It's going to be a seven box. Ball sailing through the four and the five pin gap. 55 and six for Brian Hebert now. Brian Hebert, high single, 126. High series, 529 for the season. On the 1-3 pocket, first ball of the seventh box, he drops seven. Seven, eight, five around the deck with some wood. Might go, might not, but hitting the right side of the five pin is a reasonable expectation that this will go. Based on the positioning and the direction of the wood that's at rest, that can go. We're just waiting on a slow ball return once again. Don't you hate that? Hebert on a spare bid. He needs this spare. Oh no, he caps the wood in between the five and the eight pin. That piece of wood sails through and deflects the ball. So it's going to be a nine box for Brian Hebert. 64 and seven. Three to go. I guess it's not impossible to get five strikes in a row and take everything, but at this point, that's what he's got to do. Do what you got to do. Brian Hebert off the head pin to the right. He drops. Ooh, pin still falling. I'll hold my comments until we're done. Seven plus. It's going to be seven. The four, the seven, and the eight. The eight pin even slid a bit and wiggled a bit. Spare bid. Opportunity for Brian. The wood's still rolling. Oh, yeah. And uh, he missed the object pin to the right a little bit, but... That might have been a situation where I may have waited an extra second or two. But Brian here reverses the seven pin. I think that's going to be a nine box. We'll confirm in a second. Yes, that's nine box. 73 after eight for Brian Hebert. Four strikes. Easy game. Come on, Brian. You can do it. When trapped and finished with a 116 in the fifth for a five game total of 500. Brian off the head pin to the right again. Taking out a smattering of pins. Three pins, I believe. 
Seven up, three. Seven up, three down, and Brian nearly converts that to a spare, leaving just the five pin, the king pin. That was the nemesis of me and Kevin Dietrich in our match earlier this week. It's another nine box for Brian Hebert, 82 and nine. And at this point, even with three strikes, I believe Brian Hebert can only get to 112, so Win Trafton will take the third game and the match total. So I believe the door has effectively closed at this point. Brian Hebert dropping nine, drops all but the four. But yes, it is all but, all but a mathematical certainty at this point. Brian Hebert for a spare. Let's see if he can get a spare just to pad his stats out. There we go. There's a spare for Brian Hebert. You know, that's the thing about um, the ACST. We measure many, many, many stats. We're rivaling the NFL in terms of all the many stats we keep track of, and that includes spares. Perfect box percentage is another one. Brian Hebert's final ball, fill on the spare, is going to be six. That's going to finish him at 98. 98 after five for a five game total of 452. Compare that to Win Trafton's 500 five game total. Win Trafton will take the fifth game by 18. That's two, that's two points. And he'll take the match by 48. That's another four points. So I believe that's going to be 12 points in favor of Win Trafton. Brian Hebert will go home with two. We'll confirm that here in just a moment. Yes, that is 12. That's a 12 2 split. So Win Trafton took. Every game except for the fourth. Brian Hebert took the fourth game and nothing else. So Wintrafton had one strike, eight spares, 14 tens. Brian Hebert also with a strike, six spares, eight tens. Wintrafton averaging 100. Brian Hebert averaging 90.4. Perfect box percentage for Wintrafton today is 46, and the perfect box percentage for Brian Hebert was 30. And that should just about do it from us at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. I've been Steve Kelly along with Brian Hebert and Wynn Trafton. And we'll see you folks later on tonight. If you follow if you follow Candleton Bowling Network, I'll be online once again for the Friday Night Pro League down in East Boston, Massachusetts at Central Park Lanes along with Paul Grant. But anyways, we're going to be signing off from Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, New Hampshire. I hope you have a fantastic day. Have a great one, everybody.